Welcome to the Continuum Lab. I'm back with a new instrument, and this time it's a whole instrument, not just a mouthpiece. My provisional name for this thing is the Clixophone, which I realize is a very silly name, but it also kind of makes sense, because uh, I actually used one of my Click or Continuum Lab instrument kit breakout boards to make this instrument, and the saxophone part, of course, is because it has basically the fingerings of a saxophone. So, Click, saxophone. This is not a build video, but as soon as I finish this design and improve a few details, then I'll make a tutorial about the finished version as part of my presentation of the Continuum Lab instrument kit itself. Make sure that you subscribe and turn on notifications if you want to keep up with news on that. But in this video, I'm just going to give you a quick rundown of how this prototype works, the materials that I used, and of course, first of all, you can see me play it. So let's do that. The main thing that I wanted to try out in this build was this new material here. This is a polypropylene sheet with a square cell structure in one direction which gives it a lot of rigidity. But with a bit of preparation this material can be folded or even rolled up like this. So I'm basically able to apply more or less the same techniques that I use with cardboard but with the material which is much stronger and more resistant. The concept still needs to be polished a bit but it really works quite well. These core pieces here, which help to give the instrument its shape, uh, were made by myself, handmade out of epoxy putty. Now I did design some much cooler 3D printable pieces, which I hope to make in the near future, but right now my poor old 3D printer is completely out of commission. So this is my slightly more primitive handmade version, which actually works pretty well. The other new thing that I wanted to try out was this concept here for the keys. These keys are actually made out of thumbtacks. The capacitive sensors that I use really a lot all consist of a metal electrode and a plastic layer which covers it. So these plastified thumbtacks seem like an obvious perfect solution for that, but they're actually not. The keys that are on here right now are an example of that. The plastic on these specific ones sits quite loose on the metal, which gives unstable readings. So I tried a few things to improve the situation. I heated them to the point that the plastic deformed and separated from the metal and then I reapplied them with glue to keep them in place. As you can see, it didn't exactly turn out perfect, and as the plastic is quite thick, the sensitivity of each key is also a little bit on the low side. Now, it does work, but there are much better ways of doing this, and uh, I will make a separate video about how to make cool capacitive sensors out of thumbtacks. This is not that. Other cool new features on this wind instrument include the mouthpiece, which has two capacitive sensors that I use to generate pitch bend, and of course the breath sensor inside, which has one of these awesome pressure chambers made out of a plastic bottle top and a balloon. Now I have talked at length about making breath sensors and mouthpieces in previous videos, so there's some links to those in the description. But let's get back to the keys here for a second. So what do all of these keys actually do? Well, first of all, these 13 keys here along the top, all of the red ones and the blue one, are the main keys, which define the note that is sounding. Um, they are read in a binary fashion, so that's either on or off for each key. And furthermore, they're only read when the breath sensor is activated, otherwise they're completely ignored. So as I mentioned, the fingerings on here are basically like uh, those of a saxophone. Let me just quickly demonstrate that. <laughs> Thanks. The three keys along the underside of the instrument are the octave keys. These are also read uh, to be either on or off, the same as the main keys, but they're interpreted so that you can activate either one 
or two of them at the same time, giving a total of six positions or seven full octaves. The six remaining keys, these white ones here, are different in that they are read and interpreted independently from the breath sensor and from each other. Each key simply outputs a MIDI note on message, which I'm then using to control a looper, uh, like you saw in the beginning, but it could really be used for like percussion or any other MIDI purpose. The last thing on here, which maybe looks a little bit like a key, but it's actually really not, is this thumb tag right here uh, underneath the thumb position. Unlike all of the other keys, this is uncovered metal and provides a direct connection to the microcontroller ground. So when you're working with capacitive sensors, grounding yourself to the microcontroller can really, really help to stabilize the sensors a lot. And uh, in this case, I only needed that because my sensors are really pretty crummy and uh, have a very low resolution. So this ground connection fixed that. And that is the Clixophone prototype. Now, an instrument like this doesn't just appear out of the vacuum. I've been working on MIDI wind instruments for years now. And before I finish, I want to just share with you where the main inspiration for this instrument comes from. So if you've been watching any of my previous videos, especially from last year, then you will know this instrument here. This is the open horn from my open horn MIDI system. Now, it might not be immediately obvious to you, but I can certainly see that this is based very much on this. The open horn has way more features, of course, like this bendy neck, which controls pitch bend, the tongue position sensor in the mouthpiece, and of course the display and menu system with live feedback from the sensors and everything. So it's way more advanced, but then on the other hand, of course, it's also full of custom electronics and difficult to work with materials, whereas this other instrument was made using my Click DIY instrument kit with plug and play electronics and generic parts and materials. So that's all for today. I'll leave you with another bit of Clixophone music. Take care until next time, wash your hands, and I'll see you in the continuum.